We're Allison and James, and we've been working towards making full-time adventure possible. The first step was downsizing and minimizing our lives to fit into 160 square feet. We converted this vintage Airstream into our tiny home on wheels ourselves without any prior building experience. A huge undertaking. Adopting a tiny home lifestyle created the financial freedom we needed to take the next big step towards making our dreams possible. Buying a sailboat. Another huge project, but we're ready for another big challenge and we're pretty motivated by all the amazing ocean adventures that lie ahead. We've been working hard to bring this little boat back to life and over the next few weeks, we'll be catching you up to speed so that we can meet you here in real time. Subscribe to follow along on our adventure. We woke up to a violent hailstorm last night. Was not expecting that since it's April here on Vancouver Island, but overall our second sleep on our sailboat was pretty good. We decided not to sleep in the V berth and opted for the galley this time, so tried to arrange the cushions so that it would be comfortable, and I think it turned out pretty good. It feels a little less claustrophobic when you're sleeping in the galley, but you do have the ribs of the table digging into your back. Like these guys? I understand why some people might take these off their table if they were going to sleep in the dinette regularly. You can't just like starfish and be like, oh, this is great, I've got this piece of wood running right through my back. Fantastic. <laughs> and I actually can't lie flat in this area. I'm too tall, so I was on a little bit of an angle. Mm -hmm. Interesting kind of body dynamics. How'd you sleep, Captain Partner? I slept okay. How does it feel to wake up on your boat? Feels good. It takes a little getting used to sleeping in here. There's a lot of different motions than your regular bed. But apart from that, it's nice to wake up and have a hot cup of coffee in the morning. On our lovely camp stove. Yeah, we're still using our faithful camp stove, the good old Coleman. We don't have one on our gimbal back in the galley. We do have a second stove up in the car, which we're going to test fit if we get around to it. That's a project for another day. But so far, this guy does the trick for all things camping related. Or if you just want to camp anywhere, like you could set it up in the kitchen and say that you're camping. Still makes pretty good coffee though. Now it's white. Spots. You can see the spots we missed. Did you hear those sea lions? Yeah, so it's a nice morning to be serenaded by the sea lions. You can't see them. But sometimes it sounds like there's like a chorus of them all together. Sometimes I swim by because there's like a fish packing place. I feel like this morning is a test for what we might experience when we sail to Alaska. My dream destination. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think we should go to Alaska, but I imagine Alaska also has sea lions. So, we're probably going to sound exactly the same. We've still got a whole bunch of cleaning left to do on the boat. Um, but we'd also like to open up the engine, uh, change the oil out. So to do that, we'll have to get the engine started and then uh, let it all warm up and idle for a bit. 
shut it down, drain the engine oil out, put new engine oil in, change the oil filter, and that's the first job. And then after that we need to look into the starter engine issue. We have a spare starter engine that we could just put on, but I want to grab the multimeter and track down and kind of find out what actually is going on in there, and it'll help me to get to know the engine a little bit better. You can see exhibit A over here, our uh, fairly ancient water pump. I don't even know if I've seen something like this before, but check it out. That thing is like an artifact. <laughs> yeah. It's Pretty old. cool though. It is old. It's amazing it still works. And so that explains the sputtering of our mm -hmm. water tap. does indeed. I think it also might be leaking. Yeah. Like it's just positive and negative going to the pump, so really we should be able to replace it with just a modern RV pump. We are modern people. Mm -hmm. We are. Model 36950-1000. You last for 1000 years. <laughs> Very reliable product, would recommend. <laughs> the second issue we have discovered has to do with this scary seeing a black tank area over there yeah should we tell the people what's going on with that i don't know i think it's like pretty full there's no way to tell well so. it's bulging <laughs> and it smells so we will deal with this probably needs to be emptied it looks nasty exhibit c is our pretty good looking engine i've got to say it's relatively new that's what i'm told relatively new Basically all I really know is that it's a Beta Marine 14 horsepower engine, it's uh, two cylinders, it's diesel, and it's just a little tiny tractor engine. It does run, it runs pretty good, and this morning we're going to try to get it running, let it warm up, and then assess the oil. Probably change the oil, put a new filter on, reinstall it, and that will be the beginning of engine maintenance. Time to get to know our new best friend, this guy. Shall we fire it up? Yeah, I guess that's the first step. Let's get the engine all warmed up. See if we can remember the correct starting procedure. We had to call Bob last time. So it was a little... Hey, Bob. Um, yeah, remember that boat you sold us? Well, uh, uh, we don't even know how to start it. Please give us a call back and uh, help a guy out. Which he did, he was great. Thanks, Bob, what a legend. Yeah, so hopefully I don't have to call you twice. Nothing's turning on, so. So at the battery, there's 13.24 volts, which is more than adequate for a 12 volt battery. Yeah, we're doing another test. Okay. Again? So there's 12.4 volts at the hot terminal of the solenoid. Solenoid still doesn't seem to do anything when you turn the key, so that's what we've learned. I wonder if that'll be enough clearance for me to get at the starter engine now. A little bit of slack on the alternator. I gotta take a sensor out in order to have enough clearance to slide the starter engine back. You can see that on this one, it's stuck into the flywheel probably about two inches and it's trying to get it back that two inches to be able to remove it. That's currently our problem. So in front of the starter engine here, there's a wire that's already been pre-labeled for us. It says sensor under alternator. That's where it belongs. So we're just gonna take it out, probably possibly take the sensor out if the body of the sensor is the issue for the clearance. And we'll have to reinstall that afterwards. They don't make them easy to get into. Hopefully that's finger tight about now. Let's see. I think that's the oil sensor. Let's see if the starter engine will come out this time. And there we are. 
starter engine is out. There is the off chance that it is just the relay here which needs to be replaced. This is the relay of the old starter engine. It could be that it's actually just the relay switch here that is busted. I'm gonna look around the boat and see if we have another one of these. If not, we should probably buy a new one and replace it just in case. Otherwise I'd have to take it off the old engine and install it on the new starter engine. If this is the problem, then I wouldn't really achieve much doing that. That's the plan for now. I'm gonna go search around and see if we can't find one of these. So we've got our new relay here. We picked it up from the local parts store. We're gonna install it onto our new starter engine, grease up the connectors, and then reinstall the starter engine. Okay. So that's got the bolt put back in the top of the starter engine. We're just gonna put some dielectric grease around the one in the bottom because there was a whole bunch of negative wires attached to it. Not only does it help to lubricate, but it also conducts electricity. Make sure that everything keeps good contact. Keeps the moisture out. These are the wires and these are the negative leads that are gonna connect onto the bottom post of the starter engine. Main battery ground and then two other Grounds at starter. They're all gonna go together here. Studs on the starter engine and output back in. Let's reattach the positive leads to the positive post. And then we need to attach our white wire back as well. We need to reinstall our oil sensor, put the signal line back onto that, and then we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So lastly, we just have to tighten up the alternator again, and we'll see if it fires. I hope it works. Me too. So what's next, Al? Well, we're letting the engine warm up because then we're gonna do some oil things. I really wanna get this canvas off because it looks terrible, quite frankly, it needs a good wash. I'm also planning to re-sew these pieces, so I figure if we take it off, we can take it home with us and then patch it up. Feel better to have it fixed. I'll have to leave this one on for now because we want to leave the sail in the sun. But we'll need Sometime. to wash. We need to wash it. So now that we've got the starter engine replaced and she actually starts, we can change the oil, which is really the project we thought we would do first. These uh, Kubota engines are actually pretty cool. Instead of having to use one of these, like pretty grotty and grimy engine pumps to remove the engine oil, they have a built-in sump plug here. You just turn the tap onto the sump and then open up this nozzle and then pump, 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 and all the oil should jet out over here. So our camera died, but essentially we changed the oil filter, which made a bit of a mess. It's a little bit harder to get off than we thought. But now we're gonna refill the engine with fresh oil. So it takes about two liters of oil, so we'll just add it incrementally and we'll just take it easy and we'll check as we go. Okay, shall we turn the engine on? Just under the full mark, so I'm happy with that. 
I feel like from the mess in here, you can tell we accomplished a lot. Yeah, you always know we've done something when there's tools everywhere. I'm pretty happy. Changed the starter engine, did an oil change, and the engine is firing up and purring along beautifully. I feel like we've made progress from having a non-starting engine to now having a starting engine, which feels like a big step, but probably is just a small step in the series of many other steps. The engine is one of the most important systems. Having crawled around it for a few hours, I feel like I know it a little bit better now. In your words to me earlier, you can't wait to take care of it. Yeah, I can't wait to take care of a new engine. Aww. Little Rodriguez. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna it's be a little Roddy. Roddy. <laughs> Roddy! When he's being naughty, you know. It'll be Mr. Rodriguez when he's behaving well. Well, shall we, shall we get clean everything up? up? And go have some pizza? Guess I'm getting pretty hungry. Bye for now, little boat. See you next weekend. All right. See you next episode, folks. Peace.